Welcome to episode 25 of the Living Memory Association podcast. This edition is a sweeties special with stories of sugar olly water, sour plumes and penny dainties, including tales of rationing during the war, snaffling toffees from auntie's handbag and spending your bus fare on jube jubes in Portobello. Back in time we go. And I never remember getting ice cream, it was lollipops and doddles as we call them, hard oh, sweeties, you know, yeah. things that would last you. <laughs> of course, yeah. I remember a very long ago memory, which is my mother's memory. She was born in 1911 and her dad went away to war and in fact he was killed in Flanders. But she remembers him when she was about five or six, he came back on leave, this was during the First World War, and he had five children and he lined them up and he handed out sweeties to them called Jap desserts and they were, it was like a little cube and they were bright yellow and red and brown I think kind of coconutty inside but shaped like a cube and he put a few sweets in each child's hand and she remembers looking at her sister's hand that seemed to have a few more than hers he didn't <laughs> count them out you know he just put a bundle in yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that was from about, what, 1916 or 17. But I remember Jap desserts when I was a child, but I've not seen them in recent years. It was flying saucers, which, to be honest, really weren't my favourite. I don't know, I've no idea why that was the first one that I visualised. These horrible rice paper things with sherbet in the middle that were pale coloured. Uh, oh, actually come to think of it I didn't like them at all so I really preferred things like penny dainties quiz bars um, quiz bars what were they? well quiz bars are quite exciting because they were sort of chewy fruit flavoured chew bars about maybe three inches long and about half an inch wide but the exciting thing was they had a question on the outside of the wrapper and inside was the answer so that was why it was quite exciting I was quite a, a, an acquisitive child <laughs> You were allowed a ration of 16 ounces per month. So the sweets went in two ounce bags. Right, OK. And if you wanted to use up all your ration, you got eight bags right. with different things. Yeah. Um, if you wanted to stretch it out, you, you just got one bag, two, you, two ounce of sweets. And would you get that all in a one or would you split it up? Now, that was up to yourself. What you, you were allowed 16 ounces, you wanted to spend it on the one day, you did. Mm. If you wanted to stretch it out, you did. And a year later, it was cut to eight ounces for the simple reason that the Germans were having, actually having a field day sinking our ships with the rationing and we were stuck for getting food in and break with Great Britain. So that was the reason it was cut. So uh, what year would that be, Stan, then, when the rationing was cut? 1942, when it first started. So it would be 43 when it was cut down to the eight ounces. The first I remember of actually buying sweets for myself was when I moved from Achtermachie to Cooper when I was eight and sweets were still rationed. Yeah. So that would be in 1953 and there was a little sweet shop called Cunningham's in Cooper and you went there with your money and your coupons. And I do remember very clearly the, the penny tree where you had a selection of things for a penny and you had to decide how you would spend your your shilling or your sixpence or whatever you had. But some things were two a penny or four a penny. Gobstoppers, bubblegum, fruit salads, blackjacks, palmer violets, all sorts of uh, sweets. I tried most of them. I had a very sweet tooth at the time. Probably uh, uh, is why I haven't got many teeth left. <laughs> <laughs> Dolly mixtures, sour plumes, liquor of all sorts, berry cockles. What were Beric cockles? They were stripy ones, long stripy, beige and pink. And, you know, they were quite like an arrow. You know how it looks like it's got air in it, but they were... A hard-boiled one, was it? It wasn't a chewy. It melted in your mouth, you know. Well, the very first thing I actually go was chocolate. Now, you were able to get boiled sweets, but you couldn't get chocolate. Though they did bring out a chocolate bar later on, because the popular ones then was fry, Fries Five Boys and all that, but they were all withdrawn, and they brought out a chocolate, which didn't taste like chocolate, it actually tasted like chewing cardboard. <laughs> it, it, it was horrible, and you could buy that. And then the railway station used to have like, the old cigarette machines. They had a machine that sold Fries Five Boys. And was it similar to what became the Fries Peppermint Cream or the Fries Chocolate? It was exactly the same size. Right. The same size of bar, just a small bar. Well, I thoroughly enjoyed pineapple chunks, rosebuds, pear drops, sour plumes, spearmint strips. Uh -huh. Oh, and those penny chews. They were a certain type of t Cowan's toffee. Is it McCowan's? McCowan's toffee yeah. chews. 
Yeah. Treacle toffee cheese. Oh, treacle toffee was popular. Do you remember Pontefract cakes? Oh, yes. They were a bit strong. Aye. They strong were licorice. licorice. Yeah. Well, I like the licorice laces yeah, and the like licorice the cartwheels. That's right, that wrapped round. Uh-huh. Ah. They were lovely. Yeah, they were good. And they sometimes had a sweetie in the middle. That's correct. Oh, and that was a favourite after the war, when you had coupons, ration books and coupons. You were allowed two ounces of sweeties a month, I think, or whenever it was. And I used to like the dolly mixtures because they had one jujube, a jelly jujube, and that's what I liked. In the whole of the dolly mixtures was a jelly. Is that like a jelly bean? A jelly no, oh, no, just a little oh. little jelly, ah. sugar covered jelly. Why I call it a jube jube, I don't know, but there you go. I liked licorice, in fact, I was pretty liked most flavours. I liked licorice, I liked aniseed, cin- aniseed balls, cinnamon flavoured sweets, and sour plums, uh, rhubarb rock. Oh, hi, I had. Many flavours. I can't say I didn't like anything. Though I really hated Russian toffees. Do you know a Russian toffee? No. Okay. No. So Russian toffees were a kind of red coloured hard toffee covered with chocolate. And, and, and I think wrapped up possibly. Maybe they came unwrapped, I'm not quite sure. I had a pair of twin great aunts who never married and lived in a house in Lark Hall. And I used to be dragged through to visit them on a Sunday from time to time. My older brothers managed to get out of that with the excuse that they were studying for their exams. So I'd be taken along there and these two, Aunt Nan and Aunt Tina, the only sweets they produced were these Russian caramels um, or toffees in a paper bag. And I had to eat them because a sweetie and a child, they go together. But I used to hate them. I think it was maybe the image of their house and the, and the smell. Really, <laughs> that's more evocative. <laughs> He had aniseed balls, and if you got something like ten a penny for aniseed balls, and he made a little paper cone, twisted some waxed paper into a cone shape and counted the ten aniseed balls into it. Oh, I remember gobstoppers as well. They were huge, filled your mouth, and they changed colour as you sucked them. So, unhygienically, children would pop them in and out of their mouths mm. to see what colour they were now. Because <laughs> you had dolly mixtures, which always everybody got because that lasted you a long time. Because you got a lot of them. Where as you, you had the sour plums, pear drops, they were heavy boilings. But the, you went for the likes of dolly mixtures because you were able to spread them out a bit. Do you remember jubilees? Oh, frozen jubilees. Uh-huh. I remember once being in the pictures with the frozen jubilee, and it was a carry-on film with Kenneth Connor, and he made me laugh so much. I squeezed the jube jube, and out it went, and. <laughs> We under the seats and lost it. With my mother being Dutch, licorice was a big thing, and when relatives came over, they would bring licorice over. But the licorice was an acquired taste. It was very salty. My brother loved them and still loves them. I find that I could only eat a few of those at a time before the novelty wore off. It would be after, after the, war. the war. Just after the war. Yeah, in the yeah. Fifties. Yeah, we as children we we didn't have sweeties because it was during the war. Licorice water. Well, it was licorice water we made. We used to have to put into a, a dark a wee cupboard. Do you mind that? Yeah. 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 Licorice in a jar or something. Yeah, and and a and Yeah, oh. left it for a wee while. Is it called sugar alley water or something? Sugar alley water. Ah, sugar alley. Ah. We called it sugar rolly. Sugar rolly water. Yeah. What was it called? Sugar 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 alley water. water no. Right, sugar alley water. Right. Uh, well, Aye, we did we did have that when we were in Dundee Place. If you walked up Viewforth, just as you got over the bridge at Viewforth, the co-op was on your right hand side, but on the left hand side there was a wee sweet shop, and they had the licorice. It, so me and my sister and two pals. We were about ages with each other, <laughs> and we'd go up there. It was a special treat. We'd go up there. I can't remember how much we paid. Maybe a penny or something, and then we'd go back and we'd make the sugar alley water. Just water in this mm. this Put under the bed. Aye. <laughs> well, tell us how you'd make it. Just mix the sticks together. They were but just what? like wee pieces mm. of wood and water. Mm. Right. And maybe you'd put a spoonful of sugar in, but we preferred mm. not to. And mm. to be honest, we actually quite liked just chewing the sticks, but we dip them in the water. Ah, but that just uh, eating the licorice. Just aye. eating the licorice. Aye. Aye. It depended if I was buying it myself or whether I was sneaking out my granny's handbag. <laughs> if I was sneaking it out my granny's handbag, well, I quite liked things called butternuts which were orange, sucky sweets um, with a kind of clear 
sugary centre, really, or things that she used to call odd fellows that were like Edinburgh rock but flavoured with cinnamon. But if I was buying it for myself, probably penny dainty shoelaces I quite like that I remember penny chews penny dainties they called them it was a a big toffee one individual toffee wrapped in green and red and white paper and it was a a penny dainty although it wasn't dainty it was you know Mm. held your jaw (laughs) <laughs> in an yeah. awkward shape till it uh, reduced in size. My first uh, memory of sweets like that well, was McGowan's Highland Toffee. Yes, is McGowan's. That, is that a yes, memory for you? Yes. Does that go back way back? Yes, McGowan's it Highland does. Toffee. It that was my grandma's favourite. Oh, was it? Yeah. Mm. I remember my grandma making us sweets and were like silver pennies made of uh, hard toffee. She made it and she dolloped them onto a, a tin tree, like a baking tree. And when they were set, she put them into a tin and it was a national dried milk tin that she stored right. them in. And I always see them and can taste them in my memory <laughs> when I see a national dried milk tin. And how often were you allowed the homemade toffees then? Well, my granny lived in Montrose, so that was a summer holiday visit. Yeah, you could go to the, like, to the chemist and get a, a, what do you call it, zubs which had a liquid thing, but they actually had a sweet, and it was very, very pleasant to take. We used to take them, suck them, go to school, actually, and there was another one called Nippets. They were quite popular. And another thing you used to get was stick to licorice. But if the sweet shop ran out, you could go to the chemist and get it, because actually it was a natural laxative. Back in the 60s, I think it was about, it started off with a shilling, I think, and then went up to two shillings, two and six. And I used to, on the way to school or on the way back, stop off at the sweet shop and buy the bubblegum cards. Never at the bubblegum, it was just the cards I was trying to collect and swap them with people at school. So there there was uh, footballers, and I remember further back, we had Tarzan pictures of the old Ron Ely TV Tarzan and also the Battle of Britain film when it first came out there was a whole series of cards that went with the film and again bubblegum you just got sick to death of the the (laughs) bubblegum Another sweetie I remember from those days was Parma Violet and it was a neat little tube and the word lilac purple coloured quite sweet like a cashew kind of taste yeah, they're still going. I think, <laughs> violence, yeah. And something called Odd Fellows that had a similar taste, a kind of cashew taste. They were round and they were yellow, pink, and white. Surplums. Surplums? Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. I mind uh, going to the pictures with my mum, and she gave out all her, if it's after, and she gave up out all her sweeties, you know, and then I gave her some of mine. And she said, oh, Kaffa, knowing you were going to give them them, she says, I wouldn't have given you any of mine. She says, because they were, oh, really tiny. Yeah, they were sur, yeah. right? Yeah, uh, they were sur, names, yeah. sur. plume, uh, well yeah. named. Tangy, you know, but the, the scrooge up, you know. <laughs> yeah. There was one at the bottom of Morton Street in Joppa and there was also one in Bath Street in Portobello and when I was at school in, in um, at Tarbank occasionally would spend my bus fare buying sweets at the in the sweetie shop in Bath Street uh, that wasn't very popular with my parents <laughs> I then didn't get any bus fare and had to walk home when I used to get my pocket money it was the one in Morton Street that would go along there on, on, on a Saturday to buy my sweeties and the Bourneville the layers of different coloured chocolate. Oh, right, oh, I don't remember. It was that. like dark and light, like a sandwich. Oh, right, oh, yeah, no, I do know that you mentioned that. And right. yeah. I lived across the street from Duncan's Chocolate Factory. And Duncan's Walnut Whirls. Oh, walnut whips or whips. whips uh, when you got a yeah. walnut inside and a whole half on the outside. And there was also hazelnut, bars of hazelnut chocolate, which yes, was gorgeous. Famous. Parisian creams. Oh, what was a Parisian cream? Oh, violet and oh, five different, at least different flavours oh, right. of chocolate. So they were out in a wee box, was it, the Parisian cream? I can't remember. I think they might have been. Mm. But there used to be one bar oh. of different chocolate. And they're just in a chocolate bar? In a chocolate bar, but there were different shapes yeah. and different chocolates. And that was, that was Duncan's. Duncan's. So where was Duncan's? Beaver Bank. Oh, it was Beaver yeah, Bank. Or Loggy Green Road, whatever yeah. side you came into. Mm. But I think it was technically the address was Beaver Bank. Mm. And then Roundtrees took it over. And then they owned the, the workers took it over to carry on, and then it disappeared. So I don't know if there's such a thing now. I mean, those hazelnut bars were lovely. 
They had one just right in the corner beyond the Hepburn's sweet shop. And was that purely sweets? They sold nothing else, just sweeties? He had sweets and general rations and stuff and that, you know, jam and stuff. Well, it's funny, but we, we had a few years back, they did a, what we called ghost buildings. And there's a sign actually, you can see to this day, outside that, it's now been converted into a house. But the original wall still says, purveyor of frying ales and spirits. Mm. Yet his sons come in here into the shop and they tell us, my dad never ever sold drink. And that is true because I never ever minded that shop ever yeah. selling drink. So is that maybe a sign from even further back? That sign goes thing. back to before Andrew's day. Yeah. So we really don't know what that shop was before then, because I always meant it as a youngster, it was a sweetie shop. Like, was it a quarter? Was it a quarter? Yeah, a quarter. Uh-huh. Yeah. And a, w- a wee poke or something? A wee, uh, bag? A wee, a wee bag. It was a bag. bag. A paper bag. Uh, uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. And mind in the shops that, that they used to take it out and where we like, scoop a scoop with it. Yeah. Right, yeah. Mm-hmm. So you mm-hmm. had different jars. You had a lot, a lot of jars. Yeah. There was my shop um, just at Easter Road, the top of Easter Road, not in place, is it? Just on the corner, and that had had sweeties like that in jars for long enough. Mm-hmm. You know, no, just a few a few years ago that it went into mm-hmm. liquidation. You know. So what would your favourite have put with your what would you have spent your money oh. on first? What would you Probably the rosebuds. And rosebuds. the pineapple chunks, yeah. yeah. Were... So what was a rosebud? Was it was a tiny one? little white, pink and white, delicately flavoured crunch. It wasn't a chew. Oh right. They were boiling, that sort yeah. of a thing. Uh-huh. And we were lucky we had a little shop across the road and you could get those penny vantas that you spoke about one time oh that's right you know that drink was that was it was it an, a, a, a drink was it an orange drink or diff- uh, different flavors different i flavors. think it was a cordial Banter. so i was lucky we had the sweet shop across the road there was also strange things that we used to get um, called a smoking set no, you think that's appalling. I, I think it was maybe either licorice or chocolate, but they would have things like cigars, they would have things like a pipe, uh, and, and how to introduce children to smoking at an early age, really. <laughs> I don't think, again, I, I, I can't, I wouldn't say they were my favourites, but I think they were quite an exciting purchase at the time. <laughs> and final question, Joyce, were you one of those children who helped yourself to the odd sweetie in the pick and mix before weighing the sweets? No, but I do have a bad story against myself to tell you about. (laughs) Um, Quality Street, big tin, the tins that your parents would get at Christmas time. And we had a a cootie hole, a cupboard that had lots of stuff in it in our house. And in this cubby hole was um, a a tin of Quality Street that had been there for ages. And my mum just wasn't opening it up and offering us any. So I had discovered that it was sealed with sellotape. And I I unpicked the sellotape and took out one or two or one and then resealed it. But then I kept going back and and not telling anybody over the space of I can't really remember. But she then took that tin of Quality Street as a present to someone, (laughs) uh, to a dinner or something they were going to. And the next morning I got reprimanded quite harshly (laughs) over the embarrassment of my mother handing over a half-empty tin of Quality Street. (laughs) So, So, yeah, again, it's all the excitement of the subterfuge of stealing a sweetie here and there. But um, no, I never really bought pick and mix, I have to say, so I didn't steal from them. Far too honest. I learnt my lesson. My mother gave me a round and never did it again. <laughs> Thank you so much to Wynne, Jackie, Evelyn, Joyce, Stan, Mark, Helen, Rose, and all our other lovely guests for their sweetie memories. If you have a story to share, please pop in to see us at the Little Shop of Memory in the second floor of Ocean Terminal Leith. You can also visit our Facebook page to keep up with our regular events and view our wonderful photo videos on our YouTube channel just by searching for the Living Memory Association. We have a brilliant website at www.livingmemory.org.uk hosting over 3,000 photos of the past via Edinburgh Collected. And through the webpage you can also access Thelma FM, our brand new radio station playing records and reminiscence 24 hours a day. Until next time, we bid you farewell.